Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll discuss the best ways to behave like a gentleman and not a troll when existing online. Even if Shakespeare's insults are some of the best you could hope to use. Thou art a boil, a plague sore, an embossed carbuncle in my corrupted blood. <laughs> It's no surprise that the internet has opened up an entirely new ecosystem of communication between peoples. The days of lovely handwritten letters are mostly behind us, and even their direct successor, the email, is on the wane in some applications, at least outside of professional settings. We've got things like instant messaging services, video chatting software, social media platforms like Instagram and Twitter, comments and replies on YouTube, forums, websites, and a plethora of other communication services like TeamSpeak, Skype, and Discord. Being able to communicate with the rest of the world at lightning-fast speeds can seem like a wonderful thing, and in some circumstances, it can be. But at the same time, there is one big problem. It can be done anonymously. Under this guise of anonymity, people are no longer really as responsible for what they say, so they feel free to belittle, beleaguer, or harass other people with no real consequences. And if their account on a platform is muted or banned, they can often just as easily create a new one and start the process over. So, with anonymity often comes a loss of responsibility and civility. But we should try to remember that our words have the power to affect people. And some people have a larger platform than others, and thus can affect people even more so with the words they use. To that end, we've come up with three basic basic rules today as to how a gentleman should conduct himself on social media. But the bottom line here is, just try not to be an asshole. First today then, make sure to ask yourself the question of what it is that you're actually trying to achieve online. Stated another way, changing someone's mind or promoting a new idea is occurring more and more rarely online these days, as many algorithms are only feeding us what they think we already want to hear. So, consider your own motivations if you do happen to be conversing or indeed debating with someone online. Is this experience really enriching your life, or for that matter, theirs? Second, imagine that each person you talk to online is your grandmother. In other words, if you wouldn't talk to your grandmother in the way that you're talking to that person, it's probably a sign that you've adopted an ungentlemanly tone. And third, imagine that your full name, photograph, and home address might be on display for everyone online to see. If you knew that this information was readily available for anyone, would you behave in the same way? Keeping those three larger principles in mind, then, we'll delve deeper today by looking into the don'ts. In other words, things a gentleman doesn't do in online spaces. First up today, don't engage in useless or unsubstantiated debates online. Not everybody likes an argument, of course, but there are some people out there who do enjoy a good debate. And, as we're all increasingly aware these days, the World Wide Web encompasses people of all beliefs and political affiliations, making it a battleground for many competing ideas and ideologies. If you do choose to engage in debates online, it's always a good idea to make sure you have the full picture being debated well at hand. In other words, do your research and make sure that you have your facts straight before wading into a debate, as there are likely going to be hundreds if not thousands of other commenters out there waiting to pounce on you if you lie or make a mistake. 
topic. And especially if the topic of debate is centered around opinions, things can quickly get out of hand and descend into name-calling, swearing, and other rude behavior just designed to rile up the other person. This, of course, is completely pointless, as not only are you not getting your point across, but you're going to end up looking immature and childish. Remember when debating that your problem isn't with the other person, what they look like, or what their mother looks like. It's about the original topic of the debate. Whether that be the actions of a given politician, your favorite celebrity, your musical preferences, or whether the last season of Game of Thrones really was that terrible. One word and I hit you again. I'm telling mother. Oh. So, stay on topic, and if things descend into chaos, remember that you can walk away or hit the back button. Of course, we do acknowledge that if a person or an organization is advocating violence or spouting hate speech, then having a group of people to stand up against them en masse can be a good way to incite social change. In these cases, making sure your voice is heard is important, but then it comes down to how you go about it, which brings us to our second point, don't engage in insults online. Remember, you can never raise yourself up by bringing someone else down. It only brings you down to a lower level. While anger at what somebody has said or jealousy over what they have may make your blood boil to the point that you want to stage a personal attack against them, it's never a good idea to do so. Insulting others online, especially random people that have no relevance or importance to your own personal life, just to build yourself up or make you look better to others will always have the opposite effect in the end. Meanwhile, what will make you look powerful and intelligent by comparison is having ambition, determination, and focusing your energy in the right places like your hobbies, work, or future goals. Using your time and energy to better yourself will not only make you look like a better person, it will indeed make you a better person. So, use your energy wisely. This, in turn, brings us nicely into our third don't here. Don't harass others online. Again, with online anonymity, it is much easier for people to get away with saying rude, hateful, threatening, or perverse things to others online. Things like body shaming, sexual harassment, bigotry, racism, sexism, and other threats are just a few of the ways people misuse online platforms. Just because somebody posts a suggestive video or image does not mean that you're granted the right to harass them. Treating someone poorly because they're different than you or don't adhere to your particular standards also doesn't give you the right to harass them. And rude, threatening, hateful, or perverse comments will only reveal your own weaknesses and insecurities. The bottom line here is don't say anything online that you wouldn't be willing to shout into a crowded room or where your significant other family members or friends would be present. And, of course, if you would be willing to shout these things in public spaces, it may be time to reconsider your own personal value system. Our fourth don't today is to not spread conspiracy theories or rumors online. According to psychologists, it's possible for anyone to believe in and spread conspiracy theories, as it's often simpler for us to wrap our brains around a perceived villain than to really deal with the true uncertainty of society. Fear and uncertainty are fertile breeding grounds, then, for conspiracies, rumors, and fake news. And, as we mentioned before, the algorithms behind big platforms like Facebook are designed to give you content that you'd already be more likely to read or that will charge you up further which means that you can become further radicalized or fall down rabbit holes. Put simply then, a true gentleman must always be informed and stick to science, reason, and fact. 
spreading unfounded conspiracy theories around the internet is a guaranteed way to annoy people, lose friends, and just look foolish. If this behavior is left unchecked, we'll be left with an online society, and maybe even a real-world society, that is untrusting, paranoid, and hateful. So, as a rule not just for the gentleman, but indeed for everyone, don't spread unfounded or unsubstantiated rumors and conspiracy theories, even if you think they might be true. Instead, wait for vetted information from trusted sources and go from there. For a change of pace now, our fifth don't comes from the world of online gaming. Don't hack, grief, or flame others. Gaming, of course, is a fun and interactive experience where players can choose from a variety of different genres to escape from the horror that is our reality since as early as 1958. And over time, gaming has further developed into an immersive and interactive storytelling experience. And online gaming has brought a new and social element to all of this, allowing us to compete with or work cooperatively with other players to make things more fun for everyone. But while gaming is intended to be fun and creative, it's often the case that some people choose to make it a negative experience for others. This can be done in a multitude of ways, one of which is flaming, which is when someone says or writes nasty things about another player. They may make fun of their experience, their playing style, or even things as trivial as their voice or or their gamer tag. There's also griefing when a player goes out of their way to create a negative experience for other players, whether this be opponents or sometimes even their teammates. Don't harass other players through in-game mechanics, and don't exploit glitches or bugs to create a negative experience. While it might make you feel like a strong player at first, no one should ever praise the big guy for hitting the little guy, or the parent for hitting the child, and likewise, no one is going to praise the pro gamer for beating up on the noob. Never thought I'd use the word noob on the channel, gotta say that. <laughs> What a noob. <laughs> Finally here, there's also hacking, where a player runs a program to exploit a game's code in order to give themselves an unfair or illegal advantage over other players. The bottom line here, play the game as it was intended to be played. A gentleman knows when he's won and when he's lost, and isn't a sore communicator about either outcome. And while it should go without saying, a gentleman never cheats. Now, we hope this list of online don'ts has been helpful. For those who are looking to reevaluate their online behavior, or for those who may have been doing some of these things without even realizing it. This list shouldn't be seen as exhaustive or comprehensive, however, so in all situations, just make sure that you're trying your best to be a gentleman. And to this end, we've also created a companion list of do's that you should strive to follow, and our first of these is to use correct grammar and punctuation whenever possible. If you do feel the need to converse online, or indeed if you have to do so in a professional setting, it's best to always try to use correct grammar. Many will remember that in the early days of cell phones, each button was used for three or four different letters, in the so-called T9 keyboard layout. Given that one had to hit the same button multiple times to get to the letter they wanted, a faster... My goodness. Hopefully that plane wasn't uh, rapidly spiraling toward the ground. <laughs> they may land at your town, or mine. For the air is the greatest freeway man will ever know. Because one had to click the same button multiple times to get to a particular letter, a faster texting language, sometimes called SMS language, was developed to compensate. As you may be aware, some of the most common abbreviations include Talk to you later, becoming TTYL, Laugh out loud, becoming LOL, 
I know, right? Becoming IKR. See you tomorrow became C U T M R. And some words like for or hate incorporated numbers and became for and hate. In the modern age of touchscreen smartphones, iPhones, and even swipe keyboards, though, this language has become largely unnecessary. While some elements of the language, such as lol and raffle, have become words of a sort in their own right, using this language on a wider scale will be seen as unprofessional, and you shouldn't do it in business environments. The professional and intelligent gentleman, then, will converse with others using a professional tone, and this means using correct grammar and punctuation when leaving comments, posting on blogs, sending emails, or in other online forums. One quick note here is that we're not attempting to step on different forms of regional or cultural vernacular, and of course, many people operate under the mode of code switching, where they will change the dialect or vernacular they're using for different audiences. This, of course, is completely acceptable, and what we're advocating for is to use correct and agreed-upon grammar in professional settings. Now, at this point, you may be thinking, this advice is all well and good, but what if I don't start the arguments online? And indeed, this is a valid point. As we mentioned before, anonymity makes it much easier for people to be harassed online, and unfortunately, it can also affect children when other students engage in online or so-called cyberbullying. In many U.S. states and elsewhere, this has been made a crime, but that isn't always an effective deterrent. So then, our second do for today is to only handle trolls directly when absolutely necessary, and if you are going to do so, do it without stooping to their level. If someone does target you online, it's often best not to respond to them. And if you do, don't lower yourself to their level, because as the old saying goes, they'll likely beat you there with experience. As with bullies in real life, cyber bullies are often individuals who have an underlying problem of their own that they're unwilling to face, and are thus projecting negativity and insecurity onto others. So, in order to avoid making a bad situation worse, it's often the best course of action to have a bit of pity and simply not respond and put more fuel on the virtual fire. Simply blocking and reporting is often a good course of action. And if someone you know personally is behaving in bad ways online, try to reach out and talk to them man-to-man -man on a personal level to see if you might be able to get to the root of the problem and change behavior for the better. For more general information on this topic, our video on how to deal with jerks, which you can find here, should also be helpful. On that note, then, finally today, do set a good example for others online. Overall, a gentleman should always endeavor to be a good role model for others, and using our earlier point about correct grammar and spelling as an example, if you do so when replying to someone, they're more likely to do so when replying to you. And if someone is being negative or harassing you with foul language online, don't resort to the same behavior. First, try to reach out on an empathetic level and reason with them a bit, always leading with kindness where you can. So, we hope that the do's and don'ts we've outlined today will help you to always be a gentleman and not a troll when in online spaces. Remember that just because you're anonymous doesn't mean you should be barbarous. While staring at a computer screen can make interactions seem less personal, remember that there is another human on the other side and that they should be treated with dignity and respect. In today's video, I'm wearing a relatively casual outfit, good for sitting around online or perhaps having a casual conversation with friends in person. My central element, of course, is my berry-colored cashmere sweater, under which I'm wearing a shirt with a micro-grid pattern in orange, blue, green, and purple on a white ground. 
The shirt does have French cuffs, but I've just got simple black links in them, and I'm wearing the cuffs in a barrel style to fit more easily under the sweater sleeves. My trousers are in a taupe shade to ground the outfit and work with a few of the different colors, and my dark brown suede penny loafers also serve to ground the outfit. As a final accent piece, I'm wearing two-toned shadow-striped socks from Fort Belvedere in dark green and purple to harmonize with both my shirt and my sweater. You can find the socks that I'm wearing in today's video, along with a wide array of other classic men's accessories, in the Fort Belvedere shop here. Thou hast no more brain than I have in mine elbows! You basket-hilt stale juggler, you! You starveling, you eel-skin, you dried neat's tongue, you bull's pizzle, you stockfish! I desire that we be better strangers. I can see the Tony Awards now. 